Successful professional sim racers all have one skill in common that totally sets them apart from everybody else. And I feel that skill is truly not talked about enough. And so today we will talk about it. I will tell you why it matters so much to me. And three, how you can incorporate it into your sim racing, how you can build that skill. And honestly, I'm sure this will change your entire approach to sim racing. So stay tuned. This is going to be a lengthy one. This skill I am talking about is a bit the elephant in the room and I've talked about or mentioned it several times on stream already. I'm talking about the ability, your ability to focus or in scientific terms, attention control. Attention control refers to an individual's capacity to choose what they pay attention to and what they ignore. In lay terms, attention control can be described as an individual's ability to concentrate. So why do I bring this up? First, one of the most frequent comments on the stream I often get is the consistency is crazy. How do you do that, for example? In short, the answer would be that I can focus, but of course, it's a bit more lengthy than that. So let's break it down a little. Simply put, if you cannot focus or if you cannot focus for long periods of time, your sim racing will suffer. It will take you longer to, to learn and improve. So for example, a track or certain driving situations, and you will also make more mistakes, especially that the, or when the race gets longer and you start to lose focus. And I think this is really what sets apart the successful very fast guys from just the very fast guys, because one can retain focus and the others can't. If you, for example, watch streams of Dara McCormick, if he if he does one, or if you watch Sebastian Job, or if you watch Jano Otmar, or any other of the F1 esports guys, really. All the guys at the very top, you'll always notice their consistency, you'll notice their lack of errors, but most importantly, you'll notice how damn focused they are for the entire race, for every corner, every second of their race. Statistics vary in terms of a specific number, but generally speaking, attention spans of people is low, crazy low. In fact, the numbers range from a couple minutes to just a few seconds, really. And the distractions that are waiting in everyday's life have increased in the last two decades, which kind of also shows in the data that attention span has decreased in the last two decades, which means the likelihood that you are affected by that is pretty high and so am I. So in this video, we're going to talk about also about how I tackle these challenges. And there's certainly going to be a lot for you to take away here. Let's start why this is so important in sim racing. Sim racing to me is probably one of the most difficult digital sports you can do. Here's why. All the time, you need to feel the car with multiple senses at the same time. So you have audio feedback, you have visual feedback, you have haptic feedback. And each of them is providing you with some sort of information about what is happening, what the car does. Perhaps it gives you a clue what the car also needs. So you need to make sense of that flow of information, need to combine all that flow of information into kind of a single piece of coherent information and to have an understanding of the con. All that work, of course, is done by your brain. And when you have that understanding, what you get in return is this is what's happening to the car. This will happen next. And this is good or bad about the car behavior. And I need to do this to achieve that in the next step. For that, you need all of your limbs. So hands, arms, legs, feet, all at the same time. And you need to coordinate them in line with the information you are pulling from the game and that your senses gather and your brain converts into this kind of single piece of information that is telling you something about the state of the car. And then you need to choose the correct combination of inputs of all your limbs, arms, hands, and so on. And you also need to be extremely precise with that at the same time to achieve the desired impact on the car. 
And then when you have acted upon that certain information and you did an input, then you start all over and you have to reevaluate the state of the car. You need to check all your senses again, draw the information from all your senses uh, to judge whether your action was good or not good on the car, whether the car is where you expected it to be, where you wanted it to be. And this is kind of a loop that then keeps repeating. You sense what the car is doing, you judge what it is doing, you decide on an action, you take that action, and then you reassess how that has affected the car in which state it is and what your next step of action needs to be. And this is what you repeat several times per second, every second throughout a race. The specialty in sim racing kind of is that in sim racing, you do not get breaks there's no restart there's no reset of money you don't go back to the starting line and just get another chance or something every mistake in sim racing is always deadly and this is what makes sim racing also so stressful you just don't get any any break and it really it's really challenging mentally it's challenging physically because racing has no room for mistakes at all if you do one you very likely crash or at least lose a position or whatever, but it is simply not possible to recover from any mishap throughout the race. And that's why I think you really cannot overstate the importance and difficulty of remaining or retaining focus over, over race distance, especially. If you do sim racing just half decently, that means you already have amazing mental and physical capabilities. That means you can extract information from the game, you can make sense of it, and you can already act with precision according to it. But of course, you can always raise that level. The issue with the lack of focus has, bo has both impacts on your learning capabilities and also your performance capabilities. So when you take your learnings to an actual race, when you cannot concentrate, you will miss out on information and you won't be able to act according to that information because, well, you miss it, right? Which will put in the car in a wrong state, an undesired state, and which then will need even higher attention levels and higher action levels to correct a wrong car's position and car state and rotation and whatever, right? So one mistake often leads to another and focus is kind of your single starting point to break that vicious cycle in your learning experience when you can't focus or you can't focus long enough you will simply take longer to learn as you miss out on cause and effect change while driving cause and, cause and effect change both in terms of undesirable results of inputs that you do and in terms of coming across kind of correct situations where your inputs just led to the desired car behavior and showing the right reaction of the car. And in order to learn, you really need to make these experiences over and over. I mean, the correct experience, right? Where your inputs lead to a certain car behavior that you were looking for and that you start playing with, that you start controlling. And all that is really lacking if you cannot concentrate and only when you start being able to repeating correct inputs then you can start experimenting with that and then you can start to improve on the performance side of things now we're not learning in the races usually right this is this is when we're just kind of taking what we've learned and put it into practice your race performances will suffer when you cannot focus or cannot focus long enough regardless of your current skill level, right? Somewhat, someone with the same skill level as you that can focus for longer will have better races because of course, the, 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 the smaller your focus capability is, the higher the error rate will be and your consistency will suffer and ultimately your average lap time is going to become slower. And this is really where we are back in this visual cycle. What the pros do different is because they can focus better, they will learn faster because they learn faster. They will make less mistakes and because they make less mistakes, it will save them even more energy and make it easier for them to retain their focus because they're less frequently interrupted 
from undesired driving situations. And the less energy you need to waste on focusing, the more you have available for keeping your focus alive. The ultimate target in this would be the so-called flow state. It's actually a fairly old concept. I think it's stemming from the 60s already or something, um, where it's all about really, in short, it allows your brain to run extremely efficiently on kind of an autopilot, right? The closer you are to your learned and practiced idea line every lap, the less corrections you have to do. And the more focus remains available for, well, for you, for other distractions to handle them and kind of just shrug them off, for example. And the gains of putting all your attention to one thing and one thing only are almost infinite. So let's talk about what you can do to improve that situation. You can already see, I think, that how important it is to deal with your ability to focus and how long you can keep your attention under control. And I also have to deal with it. it it's just normal, right? We have many distractions in your life and that's just a situation that is there. So we need to find ways to deal with that. There are a few simple things and simple things would be to kind of control external factors. Could just be your phone, for example. Make sure it's turned off. Make sure it cannot bother you. Put it away. Mute it. Whatever works for you, right? But perhaps don't have it within reach or at least make sure there is nothing externally coming towards you. There's no beeps. There's no vibration. No apps trying to grab your attention. No other people trying to grab your attention. The same is also true for the location where you are driving. Shut the door. Or if you're in the living room, make sure there's kind of an exclusive area that nobody is allowed to enter or something just to make sure for you just to make sure you can know and you can rely on that there is not going to be a distraction of that sort just having that reassurance already is going to be a huge improvement to the situation then you can of course when you have other people around you be it your family or your roommates let them know what sim racing is about and why it's so important to focus and that in sim racing usually you cannot have breaks you cannot get up and do something else you are simply not available because when a race has started it is only finished when it is actually finished you cannot pause it but the other people would keep driving and you can't really get back to in other situations once you once you're off you need to finish that race and it's gonna last how long it lasts there is no pause available. Then using headphones is going to be a huge help. And ideally you're using headphones that are insulating really well because the less external sound is getting through to you, the more likely or the more available will be the in-game sounds to you that offer a lot of information that you need to work with all the time. I can already personally feel the stress, for example, when there's sound in the kitchen, like just right now, where for example, the, the coffee machine would make a noise where someone is opening cupboards and closing them. Somebody's walking around or whatever. Everything kind of comes through the headphones and is layered over the most important game sounds that you rely on to judge what the car is doing. So what you really need to do is assess your own situation, really get an idea what all these factors are for you personally, and then kind of try to check them off one by one. Some you will be able to improve, some perhaps not. Then there are also a few not so simple to address things because they are more internally and they have to do with you and the life and situations you are currently in. First, it is very normal to lose focus. It happens for me too. There might be moments where your mind starts uh, wandering to whatever topic is currently also affecting you in your life that might be important, whatever it might be, family, job, whatever. It just comes to your mind, okay? This, this happens. And it's also normal for your mind to just kind of trying to escape the stressful situation during the race that you are in, because in the end, it is very consuming. It's very energy intensive for the brain. And it's natural for the brain to look to do something that perhaps might be easier or just to deal with whatever else is pressuring your mind. So just be reassured it is normal. The important thing is, though, to be able to notice these moments, notice these situations where your mind kind of starts to develop a mind of its own, right? And starts to think of these 
other things. And once you have that awareness that your mind is actually moving and you're acknowledging that, you can start taking control of that and actually refocus. There can be tiny things that you do. For example, you take the long straights on a track to have a little break and allow the mind to wander for two, three seconds. And then you tell yourself, okay, now back to the task at hand, right? Bring your mind back to tension. So use the straights for a bit of relaxation. Additionally to that, you can really just take a deep breath because your brain just burns a lot of oxygen while you are doing sim racing, right? There's a lot of information to process and you really need to, yeah, feed your brain, so to say. And if your breathing is shallow, if your breathing is tight, you'll starve your brain of oxygen and that is going to cause your stress level to rise, your stress hormones to rise in your blood that will accumulate and performance eventually will go down. There is though a little more that you can do when you're really serious about increasing your capacity to control your attention. Becoming more aware of your thoughts and get in charge of your mind wandering can be trained by the end of the day. And spending just a few minutes a day can truly have a lasting impact and you can use something uh, some some apps like like Headspace or other mindfulness apps for example that simply train you to deal with your thoughts. And it's all about not being so much affected, not so much being a passive victim of your thoughts taking over your current mood and your attention, for example. But instead, you will become somewhat of a neutral observer of your thoughts. And that really is a perspective change that will kind of allow you not to become too occupied when these thoughts kick in. And this will help with focusing again on the task at hand, shove the other topics away and focus on the racing. One more thing that I think is underrated is goal setting or the lack of goal setting. And most people, not even the pros, will have a set goal for their race. And that really is a problem. Other than, than winning, it, what, what is probably most people's goal, it, does truly help when you set something realistic because this will affect all the situations that you can do throughout a race. Because we have to say realistic here, winning is simply not possible for everyone. A lot of sim racers will actually never win because mostly you're on the grid with 40 other people and this just kind of lowers the chances by a huge margin to actually make it to the top step of the podium. So by setting realistic goals, you can start being more active in the race and start making decisions. For example, do you have to be aggressive in a certain situation or can you be more relaxed and wait for a later time in the race to make your move, for example? Or do you even let the aggressive car behind go because it's hurting your goal to go side by side every second corner and avoid the dive bombs because your goal is a bigger one. You just want to kind of keep your average race time low for faded position, but in the end, you're end up in a higher position than perhaps if you took the fight to the other car. So how much risk is needed in a certain situation to achieve your goal? And this will be easier if you have a goal set in the first place. It can also help massively having multiple goals, for example, having a high goal, having a low goal and being happy with either. And goals don't necessarily also have to be just a finishing position. There can also be other goals that you can be satisfied with when you enter a race. For example, it can just be staying free of incident or incident points. It can be staying free of mistakes. It can be nailing the pit stops. It can be watching your mirrors and seeing other cars approach too fast and avoiding them, for example, and having better awareness of your spatial surrounding around the car. But it can also simply be making smarter choices when presented with two options. So maybe start doing that before going into a race, look into the grid, who's on there, what the kind of ELO distribution is, and maybe your target can be, you just want to not lose ELO in an LFM race, for example, and that already defines what your minimum goal in the race would be, which perhaps is position 15 or something, and then you can already be happy with that or not losing safety rating in that race can be a really good goal. And then you have something afterwards that you can be happy about 
even if you didn't win the race, right? And that will change your mood, that will kind of lift you up for further practice. And the entire thing of having goals also makes it easier to keep focused because you're not struggling with the various situations that you're prevented with, uh, with because you know what you want to achieve. All right, guys, let's wrap it up. I hope that was something useful in this video. There's something you take away from here. Maybe just some inspiration to look into your personal sim racing situations. What are the factors that are distracting you? What are the factors that make your ability to focus difficult? And what you can do perhaps to address your very personal situation and how serious you want to be about it. If you want, for the Germans, there's a really great book that I take a lot of inspiration from that yeah kind of insights from that i have used for various coachings that i did i'll link it in the description and i can totally recommend it it is about where it is focused on racing drivers mental and physical preparation like the real ones but you can one-to-one -one take all these things for sim racing as well even though Maybe some side of the physical preparation might be a bit over the top. You will probably not need the wide and thick and uh, neck that the Formula 1 drivers have. But of course, everything else still applies. Let me know, of course, what you think of the topic, how you struggling with focus, how you perhaps solve your personal situation. So put that below the video and we can keep discussing about it. Also, if you haven't already, leave a like. Maybe you wanted to subscribe to the channel to see more and also have a look at my other latest videos if you feel like it. Other than that, this is it. We'll see you very soon. Bye.